October 21st Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Lamentations Chapter 1 of the Old Testament Alas, the city once full of people now sits all alone. The prominent lady among the nations has become a widow. The princess who once ruled the provinces has become a forced laborer. She weeps bitterly at night. Tears stream down her cheeks. She has no one to comfort her among all her lovers. All her friends have betrayed her. They have become her enemies. Judah has departed into exile under affliction and harsh oppression. She lives among the nations. She has found no resting place. All who pursued her overtook her in narrow straits. The roads to Zion mourn because no one travels to the festivals. All her city gates are deserted. Her priests groan. Her virgins grieve. She is in bitter anguish. Her foes subjugated her. Her enemies are at ease. For the Lord afflicted her because of her many acts of rebellion. Her children went away captive before the enemy. All of daughter Zion's splendor has departed. Her leaders became like deer. They found no pasture. So they were too exhausted to escape from the hunter. Jerusalem remembers when she became a poor homeless person, all her treasures that she owned in days of old, when her people fell into an enemy's grip, none of her allies came to her rescue. Her enemies gloated over her. They sneered at her downfall. Jerusalem committed terrible sin. Therefore, she became an object of scorn. All who admired her have despised her, because they have seen her nakedness. She groans aloud and turns away in shame. Her menstrual flow has soiled her clothing. She did not consider the consequences of her sin. Her demise was astonishing, and there was no one to comfort her. She cried, Look, O Lord, on my affliction, because my enemy boasts. An enemy grabbed all her valuables. Indeed, she watched in horror as Gentiles invaded her holy temple, those whom you had commanded. They must not enter your assembly place. All her people groaned as they searched for a morsel of bread. They exchanged their valuables for just enough food to stay alive. Look, O Lord, consider that I have become worthless. Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by on the road? Look and see. Is there any pain like mine? The Lord has afflicted me. He has afflicted it on me when he burned with anger. He sent down fire into my bones and it overcame them. He spread out a trapper's net for my feet. He made me turn back. He has made me desolate. I am faint all day long. My sins are bound around my neck like a yoke. They are fastened together by his hand. He has placed his yoke on my neck. He has sapped my strength. The Lord has handed me over to those whom I cannot resist. He rounded up all my mighty ones. The Lord did this in my midst. He summoned an assembly against me to shatter my young men. The Lord has stomped like grapes the virgin daughter Judah. I weep because of these things. My eyes flow with tears, for there is no one in sight who can comfort me or encourage me. My children are desolated because an enemy has prevailed. Zion spread out her hands, but there is no one to comfort her. The Lord has issued a decree against Jacob. His neighbors have become his enemies. Jerusalem has become like filthy garbage in their midst. The Lord is right to judge me. Yes, I rebelled against his commands. Please listen, all you nations, and look at my suffering my young women and men have gone into exile. I called for my lovers, but they had deceived me. My priest and my elders perished in the city. Truly, they had searched for food to keep themselves alive. Look, O Lord, I am distressed. My stomach is in knots. My heart is pounding inside me. Yes, I was terribly rebellious. Out in the street, the sword bereaves a mother of her children. Inside the house, death is present. They have heard that I groan, yet there is no one to comfort me. All my enemies have heard of my trouble. They are glad that you have brought it about. 
bring about the day of judgment that you promised so that they may end up like me. Let all their wickedness come before you afflict them just as you have afflicted me because of all my acts of rebellion. For my groans are many and my heart is sick with sorrow. God, the book of Lamentations is such a powerful book in, in just five chapters. And it's not one that people study a lot. Um, I think they go for the more glamorous books, but holy cow, Lamentations is is a book that, that should definitely speak to all of our hearts. And in five chapters, whoever the author of Lamentations is, goes from a sinful, tormented person to understanding your mercy, your grace, your sovereignty, and that the only way the two can go together is is through coming to you, humbling, humbling themselves, uh, sincerely apologizing, and admitting to what they have done, and then setting their lives in a new path with a new heart from you in five chapters. So God, as we go through the next five days of of reading this in the videos, I just ask that you come into every single person's heart who hears these next five uh, chapters from the Bible and allow them to see where they are in that process. Are they back in chapter one, uh, a sinful, tormented person who's really struggling with the, gosh, how could you do this? I didn't do something that that was bad to, I did something really bad and now I'm paying for it and woe is me and I'm so confused. Like you can hear the turmoil uh, in, in their words. Um, are they in chapters two, three, and four as, as that process begins uh, to understand that connection to you and, and your sovereignty? Or are they um, walking completely with you? Uh, that, they, that they have restored whatever has happened uh, to them and, and they're moving forward. God, just allow them to see where they are in that process and, and help them just dig in deep into Lamentations uh, because we all go through the cycle where we go back to being a sinful person and choosing sin over you and then we have to go through the repentance and the forgiveness process and getting back on track. I, I love how this, this chapter heads from torment to restoration and renewal. Uh, it's just such a, a beautiful part of the Bible and filled with so many real human emotions. Uh, I also find it incredibly fascinating and this is just a little bit more of the the nerd in me that that this book obviously was written originally in Hebrew and when they wrote it it was done in an acrostic style meaning um, alphabetically that they used the letters of the Hebrew alphabet to start different parts of this uh, literally going from A to Z of all of their pain and sorrow but what I find fascinating is if we could read it and see it in Hebrew, which I'm sure that they can do online, uh, they'll see that the, the looser, can I use that word? Uh, the more loose the acrostic is, is where the person who's writing this seems to be in most turmoil. The tighter the acrostic, meaning uh, the more perfect it is, the more structured it is, the more in control it is, that's a good word, uh, is, is that reconciliation uh, with you of understanding that they need to repent of their sins and, and choose you over choosing the sin. And I, I find that fascinating because we do that in our own lives. When, <laughs> when our life seems to be spinning out of control, at least I can speak for me, when my life seems to be spinning out of control and I can't seem to grasp onto anything and everything's elusive, it is definitely always me pulling away from you, me trying to handle things on my own, and 99.9% .9 of the time it also includes sin, which sometimes that sin is yanking control back from you right there is... Uh, a multitude of my sins, but it may be something else as well. And, and my, my life gets very chaotic, just like we see the writer of this, where he goes from controlled acrostic to chaotic acrostic and vice versa. 
chaotic acrostic is his turmoil period and then as he brings you into his life as he humbles himself as he as he repents of his sins as he understands that you need to be above and beyond everything else in his life control returns um, structure returns calmness returns calmness is a good word in my life because when you're running my life when I let you be in charge Ooh, see there's even that bad word let you be in charge when I stop acting like I'm in charge um, and you are my Lord and my Savior and my sovereign God in my life that's when calmness returns to my life that's when my priorities are back in order that's when you are greater than me and my wants and my desires God, again, allow us as we go through these next five days to really, truly understand where we are in this process, whether it be the chaos part or the calmness part, and, and allow us to know that process that we can have res restoration with you, we can have renewal with you through repentance of our sins, through prayer and conversation with you. We can be like the sinful person that at the beginning of this chapter, it is a mess and we can return to you. This isn't a person who's, who's walking really tightly with you and, and flubbed up a little bit. This is a person that really made a mess of their life, like me. <laughs> and I seem to do that incredibly well. And they're pleading and begging that in this chaos of their life that they have created, that it returned to calmness, that it returned to being restored with you, that you return into their heart, into their lives to guide them, to protect them, to give them grace and mercy, and most important, to be the person on the throne in their heart to control their lives and guide their steps. God, thank you for such powerful chapters that sometimes we gloss over for the more glamorous ones in the Bible. Thank you for these powerful chapters that you're allowing us to hear and read and listen to and study. In your son's name I pray. Amen.